Hello everyone, I think this is the 200th time that I am starting this audio recording because I just keep stumbling upon my words, but we're gonna go through with this one, hopefully. Um, I, I hope that you're doing well. I am back from the holidays I have been for um, a week or so, I think. Uh, but I'm going away next week again. I'm going back to the seaside this time with my grandmother. And we're just going to be spending five days together. Just a really chill holiday. Playing card games and <laughs> like relaxing. I feel like I need it before starting university. And I've been wanting to spend some more time with her anyways. Uh, so that's going to be really nice. I think I'm also going to take the opportunity to spend some days off social media. But with that being said, I have been filming a whole bunch of videos while I was away. I just haven't really gotten to actually editing them. So I thought for this first one, I would share this From Life painting session that I did while I was at the seaside. It's a very straightforward video to edit and so I, I thought it would be nice to get me started with the actual editing that I have to do. And also this painting was very well received over on my Instagram so I thought you might be interested to actually see the process. Um, but yes, I if you've seen some of my other videos you might know that I normally don't work from life. I usually work from reference pictures and while I don't think that there is anything wrong with that, I think Painting from life and painting from references are two very different things. And since I learned to paint by myself and I mostly learned techniques and, you know, like how to actually draw and paint from YouTube videos and things that I found online, most of the things that you find online will require you to use reference pictures also because it is typically easier to paint from a reference photo than it is like from actual life because you can just print out a reference picture and grid it and use that as a as a tool to help you it's not a method that i particularly like but it is something that you can do um also like just having a picture allows you to paint or draw exactly what you see there and you don't have to worry about the light changing and the weather changing and you know the subject maybe moving whatever else it might be but since i've you know i've never actually had the opportunity to paint from life um to paint anyone from life and my idea of life painting has always been portraiture or like full body paintings and that sort of things uh, I know you can go to um, like anatomy drawing classes that sort of stuff and it's the kind of thing that you do when you go to art school but it's not something that I've ever gotten to do and that was sort of my idea of life painting until a while ago um, but lately I've been very fascinated with the work of a few artists and I'll put their names on the screen because I don't want to butcher them but they all paint a lot of everyday life scenes. And I'm not entirely sure whether they all always paint from life. I don't think they do, um, at least not always. But it got me to think that life painting can also be, you know, like a still life. And I don't know why I never like thought of that. Of course, I know that, you know, old masters used to paint still lifes from life because that's all they could do. But I never thought to apply that to my own work. It sounds kind of stupid to say, but it you know it is how things went, and uh, I'm 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 going to be honest with that. Um, but yes, so I've been very interested in their works, and even though I think working from reference pictures is totally valid, and I really like it because it it allows me to achieve the specific result that I want, especially if I'm taking my own reference pictures then I can control everything, like every step of the way. And I can take the picture and edit it to look how I wanted to and then base my painting off of a picture that already gives off a certain vibe or a certain feeling that I want to represent. Um, but I also want to be able to represent reality as it is. And I think painting from life um, allows you to have maybe a more spontaneous result um, and a more realistic representation of your subject because there is no intermediate between your eyes and the actual subject. Um, and so 
While I think both methods are absolutely valid and have their own pros and cons, um, I think it, it like painting from life is a skill on its own and it's definitely something that I am not experienced with and it's something that I would love to learn and I definitely know that I need to practice more in order to be able to learn. Um, also, painting from life adds another level of complexity to the process as well because obviously there's so much more that you're taking into account while you're actually drawing and painting um you know it's again as i said it's a skill that needs to be developed and needs to be practiced and that's part of why i'm so fascinated with it so i decided to try it i just put together um two pieces to try and paint them and I thought it would be interesting and it's a lot harder than it looks to actually get objects to look three-dimensional when you're painting from life that's something that I've noticed I also found it a lot harder to actually match colors to like what I was seeing and what I was mixing on the palette I don't actually know why that is but you know i it's not something that I do, but I feel like when you have your picture printed out on a piece of paper or you you know you're looking at the photograph, you can sort of pinpoint a certain place and I don't actually put my finger on there, but I have an idea of exactly where that place and that color is and I know what color I need to mix. While having that from life and with the light changing and everything, I feel like it's a lot harder to mix colors as well. But it was very interesting and I'm incredibly happy with the result I got. It's, I think it's one of uh, my favorite pieces that I've produced lately um, and with oil paints in general. I have it hung up on the wall in my room. I really like it. I love the colors that I choose. Um, I like how the overall color palette flows together. But even then I did took I did, I did take a bit of liberty when it came to um, like the shadow colors on the sheet, uh, you know, the, they're very green and I thought that would help contrast the, the color of the peaches. So I still took some personal liberties because that's something that I'm used to doing. I also, when I'm painting, sometimes I put my reference in black and white and then just go from there and add colors as I like them or I change colors uh, from the reference that I'm using and that's something that I'm just normally used to doing and I did it in this case as well and I would like to also learn to take that down a bit and actually learn to represent reality as it is um, but I think this worked really well. It was a very interesting study. You'll definitely be seeing more of these kinds of paintings uh, from life type paintings. Of small objects and small scenes because I obviously I can't set up anything huge. Um, but yes, I, I thought it was interesting and I wanted to share my thoughts about it and I would love to hear yours. So feel free to leave them in a comment or tell me what you think about it on Instagram and that kind of thing. I always love to chat with other artists and other people on Instagram. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what I had to say for this painting. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you are doing well and I'm going to wish you a lovely week and I'll see you soon with a new video. Bye.